The G36 is the German infantry's main battle rifle, and it's one of the most requested weapons that we get on here, probably because of the massive scandal about whether or not it melts after automatic fire. That'd be like the engine falling out of my O2 Toyota Camry. Unacceptable! There's a lot of doubt about whether we should blame the rifle or faulty ammunition. When I got to test fire it back in 2010, me and a lot of soldiers loved it, but that was right before the controversial incident in Afghanistan where the German army claims the rifles were completely useless. In this video, we'll examine the case of the G36 and get to the bottom of this unsolved mystery. Afterwards, we can debate in the comments section about whether this rifle deserves the mixed reviews or not. Everyone loves a good disaster story, and this weapon is definitely that. If the G36 was a movie, it'd be The Room. A good intention cluster So here's what happened. It was supposed to be the future of combat rifles with its three times magnified combat optic, lightweight plastic body, and it even had a 30 round translucent magazine so the enemy could see for themselves exactly how many more rounds you were about to put in them. The thing looked like it was ready to shoot frickin' aliens. The rifle was originally created by H&K as a futuristic, fully automatic, fancy 5.56 replacement for Germany's old but trusty 7.62 G3. The G36 fires 750 rounds per minute at 850 meters per second to an effective range of 400 meters. The weapon is made mostly of carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Now this design choice is one of its unusual distinguishing features because most military rifles are made of aluminum alloy, metal, or wood. The plastic casing helped make it lightweight, but at the same time, it's also led to all the controversy about its overheating problems, since experts say the plastic can't handle the heat of sustained fire. In 2010, an incident in Afghanistan happened with the G36. A platoon of German infantry got into a firefight and claimed the weapons overheated after putting only 60 rounds through it, and an investigation followed immediately. It was such a scandal of an incident, the armed forces of Germany made an instant reaction and decided they needed to immediately switch to a new replacement rifle. No, let's try to fix this problem. No, troubleshooting. Nope, straight to throw them in the garbage. If we threw out every M4, every time it needed to be upgraded, then New Jersey's landfills would be made up entirely of M4s. Supposedly, what happened was the plastic casing around the barrel got warped by the heat and the accuracy was thrown off by as much as 20 inches at 200 meters. That's enough to completely miss a target. Trust me, I know a thing or two about missing a target. You might be wondering why it took from 1997 till 2010 for them to realize the G36 could have a problem. This was because prior to then, the German armed forces had been used only in peacekeeping operations. After coming out of the losing end of two world wars, the whole world put Germany into the timeout corner. And they were let out just in time for the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. That's when we learned that the G36, which did great in peacetime, had problems in new combat environments. But we still haven't solved this case yet. Who was right? Did H&K make a garbage rifle or was it used incorrectly by the German army? Now H&K has a reputation around the world for making top of the line rifles. They helped fix the problems with the SA-80. Special Forces soldiers often use their weapons. So it's hard for many people to believe they made a lemon of a rifle with the G36. H&K did their own tests and they say it was a tin protective covering that units applied to the barrel, which caused the overheating problems. To further complicate things, many other German army veterans now defend the rifle and suggest that the incident in Afghanistan was just a fluke. According to a study, about 50% of the German army believes their rifle is reliable, but for comparison, the US Army has 80% faith in the M4. But then, in 2014, the German Federal Ministry of Defense announced it was actually the fault of crappy ammunition that had copper jackets that were too thin. That's why it overheated. This essentially cleared H&K and the G36 name. But by then, it was too late. The political damage had already been done. No one wanted to admit they were wrong, and the German army was already committed to switching weapons at that point. They didn't want to walk it back. It's like when you're in a fight with someone and you realize you're wrong, but you don't want to admit it, so you just double down on being wrong, except in this case, there's millions of dollars on the line. The whole damn case was heating up like a G36 barrel in the hot sun. I spent days in the gutters of the internet trying to solve the case. The multi-million dollar defense scandal started looking like it'd be swept under my filthy IKEA rug. 
Just another wide-eyed, promising gun killed off in its prime. Gone forever. Caught in the middle of lies about tin coverings, defective ammo, and melting plastic. Melting! Just like my sense of morality. Sure, I wanted to pin it on Jody, but he wasn't responsible for everything. Right when I was beginning to think the case of the G36 might haunt me forever, the answer hit me like a 556 straight to the teeth. I think what really happened was the armed forces of Germany were originally asking for an impossible unicorn of a rifle in their specifications. They wanted something that could handle rapid fire while also being incredibly lightweight at the same time. You can't have your cake and shoot it too. In order to meet these strict specifications, maybe H&K didn't make the barrel heavy enough. I think the truth is the rifle probably did have design flaws and did overheat too easily under certain combat conditions. How likely are soldiers to regularly encounter those specific conditions is up for debate. Whether you like the G36 or not, don't forget to fire around at that like button. The G36 is one of the newest main battle rifles in NATO. It only came out as recently as 1997. I'm not surprised at all that there was a few flaws that needed to be addressed. When I think about myself in 1997, listen, I went through an emo phase, alright? I still listen to Taking Back Sunday, but I'm not the same gun as I was back then. I might have mixed up that analogy, but you get my point. The M4 and the SA-80 famously took decades to perfect. Sometimes public perception of a weapon can matter just as much as its actual performance. In any event, it looks like this year, 2020, the German military is going to switch to the MK556, which will be their first main battle rifle not made by H&K. In just a second, we're gonna get into how the US almost adopted a version of the G36. But first, let's get into the specifications of the performance of the weapon. The G36 had a ZF 3x optic built directly into the carrying handle of the weapon. It also has a reflex sight on top of that for close range engagements. It's 39 inches long and it has the ability to fold the stock back to make it shorter, which is nice if you need the extra room when you're crammed into the back of an armored vehicle. It can still fire once that stock is folded, which is a great feature not found in many rifles. It uses the short stroke piston system, which they later use this same system to help develop the Marine Corps H&K M27 IAR. Even if you're not a fan of the G36, it's definitely helped influence many other successful rifle designs. The G36 has a machine gun version called the MG36, which has a longer, heavier barrel and is used with a drum, but it hasn't convinced the army that it can replace the belt-fed automatic weapon. It comes with transparent magazines, so you can easily see your round count because it can be easy to forget how many shots you have left. They also had a locking mechanism on the side so you could double stack your magazines easier for quicker reloads. In the year 2000, the US military almost adopted a slightly different version of the G36 to replace the M4. You might remember it was called the XM8, which was basically the G36 with some red lipstick and proprietary attachment ports. You can watch our video on the XM8, but basically the US military turned it down partly because, you guessed it, there were concerns about the plastic weapon overheating and failing. So maybe you could forgive me for loving the G36 and still hoping that it goes from a disaster story to a redemption story. When I hear in the comments everyone being skeptical about the new plastic cased ammo cartridges for the 6.8mm, I can understand why everyone is weary of plastic military equipment. They've been burned before by the G36. On the other hand, over 40 different countries around the world still use the G36 in one capacity or another, so the rifle isn't going to exactly fall off the face of the earth now that Germany is moving away from it. We'll have to wait to see if composite housing catches on as a popular material to fabricate weapons out of in the future. For now, it appears it might be unfair to call the G36 the nickelback of guns. Task and Purpose out.